Hey everyone, it's Stephanie with Project Vibrancy. I hope you are having an incredible July 4th weekend. It's still smack dab in the middle of the weekend and the only reason I am bothering to pop in here today, if you notice I skipped Thursday because that was actually July 4th and I was busy and you were busy and there was no reason uh, to pop in here, but I thought you might appreciate uh, today and tomorrow as you're winding up the weekend and you're getting ready to go back to work, uh, some tips for how to beat the bloating that tends to show up on these holiday weekends. If you're anything like me, uh, especially in the past, I'm not really struggling with it anymore and that's why I'm able and willing to share these tips with you because it has been something that has plagued me in the past and actually kind of made me dread uh, you know holiday weekends a little bit of course I love it I love to see everybody I love to go out to the lake and spend time with my aunt and uncle or uh, this past weekend or on Thursday evening had a, an amazing you know potluck buffet dinner at my friend Stephanie March's home and everybody brought gorgeous food and we had all this beautiful wine and had a fire and for some reason uh, there were no bugs other than fireflies totally magical i don't know where the mosquitoes were but we were all we we're all a little freaked out and totally grateful that there were no mosquitoes so that we could spend time uh looking at the fireflies it was ridiculous it was so much fun um but i used to kind of stress about buffets like that because i knew that i would really suffer afterward or i would even feel unwell right then and there while I was eating those foods and I just uh, am past that and certainly in a place where I can eat a wider variety of foods now and I love to share that information with all of you. I've got a private Facebook group going called Food Reaction Freedom, Find Your Best Foods and that is really kind of talking about some of the things that um, I'll share with you today but just some ways to do some digging and sleuthing and figuring out what is it that's causing bloating for you? And then perhaps what you could do about it, whether that's an elimination diet to dig in a little further, um, or if you've tried that before, how to find a good functional medicine practitioner because maybe it's time to do some testing. So anyway, I just like to share that information with you and I'll get into that a little bit more as we go along here today. Um, but first I thought I would just point out the most common causes of bloating and give you some ideas for where you can experiment as this week goes on and as you get back to normal. Uh, because you probably do find that you start to get back to normal after a weekend like this and you maybe wonder why. And uh, certainly one of the biggest provokers, this is gonna surprise no one, is alcohol. And we all, tend, if we drink at all, tend to have more alcohol on holiday weekends and uh, alcohol in general can totally do it incredibly hard on your digestive system in general so uh, really hard on your liver obviously we all know that but also hard on your stomach and your um, small intestine and so it's just irritating so if the more you're drinking the more issues you're gonna have the more bloating you're gonna have but there are certainly some types of alcohol that cause more bloating than others no surprise uh, if beer sort of is something that you notice causes more bloating and there are multiple reasons one because of the alcohol two because it has gluten in it sometimes that can be an issue for people not always three it is uh, um, you know fermented longer to get to the point where it's carbonated and those longer ferments can really up the amount of histamine in an alcoholic beverage or really any beverage like kombucha for instance as well um, and and so Keeping an eye on whether the sparkling fermented beverages cause you even more problems can be a little bit clue of a clue that you might be having um, a reaction to the higher histamine load in the beverage. So my tip in that case is one, you know, always just to, you know, be moderate in your consumption of alcohol uh, or, or really not drink at all, especially when you're trying to uh, uncover some of these bloating issues. And then two, to, uh, Stick with white table wine, which tends to be rather low. Red wine can often be a problem for people, but that's individual because there are other things that you can react to in red wine, like sulfites and you know other, um, other parts of red wine that aren't included or aren't um, 
you know, an issue with white wine. And then to look at clear spirits like vodka, for instance, and just stick with like a vodka soda. It seems kind of boring, although it's also very trendy right now. And I think part of the reason is that, yeah, it's lower in calories and so that appeals to people, but you also don't tend to also have a, uh, a lower histamine reaction. So if you notice that you flush and get kind of brain foggy when you have champagne or you have beer, then trying a clear spirit with soda can be a real game changer. So that's part of the reason I think that it's becoming a lot more popular. Uh, another is that Clearly we're all eating more snacks. There's the buffets, there's being at the cabin and having more snack foods. And those processed carbohydrates uh, really can ramp up or exacerbate any small intestinal bacteria, bacteria overgrowth or small intestinal fungal overgrowth. SIBO is the acronym, CIFO, the other acronym, or just calling it candida. Those, uh, those overgrowths, are really provoked by eating a lot of processed carbohydrates. So of course, it's the holiday weekend and there's chips and crackers and cookies and baked goods, more sugar than you're probably uh, used to eating. And all of those things can really fire up uh, those overgrowths if you have them. And, and it's a clue, it's a good clue uh, that if that starts to happen, that that's something that you can start to dig into and research a little bit and it's something that you can treat. So I like, I don't like bloating. I'm, I'm not gonna say that, I hate bloating. However, it is a very good clue that something is amiss and it gives you the opportunity to dig in a little bit. So if you can kind of see it as that and start to pay attention to the things that are causing bloating and what you're noticing when it happens, um, I talk a lot about keeping a food journal. Nobody's gonna keep a food journal over 4th of July weekend. I completely realize that. But if, uh, you know, after the weekend, you're really wanting to kind of understand what just happened this weekend and why did I blow out like this and why did I feel kind of crummy the entire time, uh, keeping a journal, a very detailed journal about what you are eating and what happens on the days that you bloat and what happened the day or two before even can really start to give you some good information. So just put that away for this week. I know nobody's going to food journal over the weekend. Um, another thing that I really started to notice is that often holiday weekends, including my 4th of July, are full of all these amazing salads. And all these salads have things like raw red onion in them or, you know, raw sweet onion. They have garlic. There's hummus on the table. There's like legumes and salads with beans. Um, there are lots of raw cruciferous vegetables like cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. And those all make amazing salads, but they are also really hard to digest because of uh, certain sugars and fibers that fall under the acronym of FODMAP, F-O-D-M-A-P-S, FODMAPs or FODMAP. And you'll perhaps have heard of, read about, seen people talking about a low FODMAP diet. And I'm just going to, I'll put a link below to a site that gives you a list of high FODMAP foods, low FODMAP foods. There's nothing particularly intuitive about it, so it does require looking at a list. And it's basically a mini elimination diet. If you're experiencing a lot of bloating, taking a look at low FODMAP foods and avoiding high FODMAP foods can really give you some good information. And it can point toward and again, that you know, bacterial overgrowth or fungal overgrowth, and give you some information for uh, going about treating that and lessening those symptoms. So I uh, think it's a great idea. It's kind of a pain, but there are lots of delicious low FODMAP recipes out there. And a lot of times, the biggest provokers are on onion and garlic, both cooked and raw, and uh, and just backing off on cooking with a ton of onion and garlic can be a really good test for whether you are uh, having issues with high FODMAP foods. So I'll put a link to FODMAP foods, but I would suspect that a lot of July 4th eating and buffets have really high FODMAP foods in them. That's just sort of by definition. So that's something to consider. Um, this was a big one for me. I would always notice it when I would go to the lake with my aunt and uncle, which is one of my very favorite things to do, and then to sit and drink coffee 
with them and with what other, whichever other friends and family members were there because what's more fun than, you know, drinking coffee outside, looking at the water or just hanging out with your family. And I would drink a lot more coffee than I would ever drink at home. And I wouldn't even have eaten anything yet that day. This is why it was such a clue for me. And all of a sudden I'm like, gonna get ready to put my bathing suit on and I'm already feeling super bloated and I haven't even eaten anything yet. And I realized that it was just this excessive amount of coffee and caffeine that I would consume when I'm on vacation. And so uh, it's worth remembering that caffeine is very irritating to your gut, to your stomach, to your small intestine, and to your large intestine. It's the reason that probably most of America, oops, that was my, uh, this my microphone, you guys. Hold on one sec. Uh, I've had to put it through my shirt because I lost the clip, so sorry about that. Uh, anyway, the caffeine, well, most of America sort of counts on it to keep, uh, you know, keep regularity. So, you know, coffee definitely has a stimulating effect to it, but it's also really irritating. And so if you notice that you are drinking more coffee while you're on vacation or on a holiday weekend, that can definitely contribute to more bloating and you can make a different choice. You can just drink another beverage or another hot beverage. Um, and fake sugars are sort of the last one. Fake sugars and gluten-free foods, how's that? So gluten-free foods can be harder to digest than, um, than even wheat foods. And I'm not saying that for someone that needs to be gluten-free like me. I, I can't eat gluten, but I also don't substitute in a lot of gluten-free baked products. They don't eat a lot of gluten-free bread. They're made with a lot of starches, and some of those starches can really cause a lot of bloating and be hard to digest. They have a lot of uh, gums in them, like xanthan gum, which uh, mimics the stretchiness of gluten, and for some people is incredibly hard to digest. So if you're backing off on gluten, but you're replacing that with a lot of gluten-free cookies and gluten-free crackers and bread and stuff like that, um, you might find that some of those foods made you more bloated than when you were eating gluten ironically and for very different reasons but just keep that in mind because sometimes more of those foods pop up over the holiday and the other thing that can pop up is a lot of artificial sweeteners um, particularly the sugar alcohols like xylitol are hard to digest very fermentable xylitol is used to sweeten a lot of candies a lot of gum um, and and people can have a really bloated reaction to it so just keep all of that in mind. Shows up in candies sometimes too, and just stuff that you probably wouldn't eat on a day-to-day -day basis, but might when you are on vacation. So those are sort of my uh, biggest pointers in terms of what to look at. And then to get back on track, the flip side, of course, would be to avoid those things, especially if you notice that you were eating more of them or consuming more of them over the weekend. So, you know, to back off, uh, on coffee and caffeine, uh, if you're having a lot of stomach issues, if you're having indigestion, heartburn, uh, and, and a lot of bloating, I would definitely take a look at your caffeine consumption and your coffee consumption. Um, I would take a look at that high FODMAP uh, foods list and see if you're consuming a lot of those and if that might be causing issues for you. Uh, I would you know, take the opportunity to back off on the alcohol use now that we're gonna be past the holiday weekend. And especially if you're drinking beer and drinking champagne, and even if you're drinking kombucha in order to drink less alcohol, uh, all of those are very high histamine beverages and they can have a really immediate impact. I mean, like after a few sips even, um, that you'll notice a headache start, you'll notice bloating, you'll notice perhaps flushing and it's worth taking a look at some of those high histamine beverages because they can be really trouble, uh, troublesome. And then a couple of tips for some things that you can try supplement-wise. Uh, I am a big fan of taking magnesium citrate. I use it at night. It can help promote sleep and uh, be sort of relaxing for people. I can't say that it makes me feel relaxed, but the average American diet does tend to be quite low in magnesium, and magnesium citrate does have, for me, a good quality one. I take the Pure Encapsulations brand. Um, it does keep my digestive tract moving 
efficiently, basically. And that, for me, reduces bloating. And so I'm a big fan of magnesium citrate. If you haven't uh, ever taken it before, taking it at bedtime is something that can really, it's not gonna be like the difference between night and day, but it's just one of those things that can help when you're addressing all these other issues as well. Um, and then I really count on two amazing probiotics. I have taken so many probiotics over the years, and there are only two that have ever helped me. That's just me. Uh, but And probiotics can be very individual, so I, I don't say this by saying that you should absolutely take these probiotics. I'm just saying that these are two that are very high quality, and they have a very anti-inflammatory effect on my digestive system. That's my understanding of it. It's also you know, what people and studies are starting to point to why probiotics help people. It's probably not because they re-inoculate your digestive system in your colon with healthy bacteria. It's because they act as an anti-inflammatory agent and when you're having a lot of bloating, that is a sign of inflammation and it does seem for me to really keep uh, to keep everything in check and to keep bloating in check. So the first one is called uh, Gut Pro and it's made by a company called, called Corganic. I've talked about it in different videos before. Corganic is C organic, basically organic with the letter C at the beginning of it. And I recommend it for people all the time. I also recommend that you start with a very small amount of it. So if you buy the capsules, to open the capsules and really just tap out even a quarter of a capsule and um, just to tap it on some food and, and consume it that way. And do that as a test because it is a very powerful probiotic. Uh, I started taking it because it was recommended to help with histamine. It has histamine degrading strains of bacteria in it and it does not contain the com more common strains that are histamine promoting and, and show up in a lot of other probiotics and I think is really a reason that people don't feel that well when they're taking a probiotic sometime because they can have a higher histamine load by taking that probiotic. But this one is meant to be neutral or even histamine degrading. And uh, anyhow, I now have worked myself up to one capsule a day. I take it every day and it's been incredibly helpful for me. And then the second one is a spore type of probiotic uh, and it's called Proflora 4R and it's made by a company called Biocidin and it's different than the Gut Pro which is like a classic bacteria probiotic. The spore probiotics are different. They're not bacteria and they complement one another and the effect for me has been incredibly calming. Um, the two together the Gut Pro helped, and then when I added the Pro Flora 4R, that just seemed to be exactly um, the thing that I needed, and it has eliminated bloating for me, um, really helped with gut healing, and it's allowed me to add more uh, foods like occasionally eating raw onion and occasionally eating you know, raw cruciferous vegetables without them causing me the problems that they would have caused me in the past. So. That's just my recommendation. You could totally experiment with them. I'm not suggesting that you should um, take them, but just sharing my experience with them. So I talk about all of these things in this uh, Facebook group in Food Reaction Freedom, Find Your Best Foods. Uh, I also walk people through this process one-on-one -on -one, uh, or in a group coaching setting, which has been an amazing experience because it's really hard to make these changes and to keep all of this information straight and to remember uh, to keep journaling, to keep investigating, to dig in, and then when you do find certain clues, what to do with those clues. And sticking with those changes, of course, comes from community, which is why we all like to be on Facebook and to support each other and to have that Facebook group, but then also uh, to have a more intimate one-on-one -on -one or a small group experience where we can really learn from each other and help each other out. So that's sort of what I've been working on lately. Of course, I always am offering Project Vibrancy Meals, which are the meal plans that I developed for anyone who's wanting to experiment with an elimination diet or who is trying to dig into eating deliciously while figuring some of these things out. So I've been asking people questions 
when they come into the Food Reaction Freedom Group. And one of the hardest things for all of us is, yes, we definitely want to learn about the foods that are causing bloating and figuring out the foods that make us feel best, but we don't want to be bored and just eat the same five meals over and over again. And of course, that is a, uh, you know, the ticket to failure. Um, it's too hard to live a life that is full of boring uh, food or food that is too time consuming to prepare. Though that combination or even one of those two things will derail anybody. Um, you just can't do it for that long. And so that is why I love to talk about recipes and write recipes for you guys and share the tips with you that I have figured out uh, struggling with all of these things over the last several years, many years, and, uh, and really um, introduce you to other people that are on the same journey because you are not alone in trying to figure any of these things out. Let me tell you, uh, the number of women who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, um, dealing with bloating, fatigue, trying to figure out why the foods that they used to eat no longer work for them uh, is so, it's epidemic basically. That is how incredibly common it is. So if you've been feeling isolated uh, in feeling irritation and even sadness about you know, coming into a weekend like we've just had and knowing that you're gonna feel like crap by the end of the weekend, you are definitely not alone. So, and there are many things that you can do about it. So I hope some of those are helpful. Definitely ask me questions below. I will link to both of those probiotics. I will link to the uh, high FODMAP food so you can take a look at that. And I'll give you the link to that Facebook group too. And uh, yeah, we can just keep talking about it, so. Happy 4th, you guys. I hope it has been very fun, even if it was a little bloaty, and uh, I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye.